everyone. My name is Marta Garcia. I am a senior here at Shriner, public health major. Hello, my name is Sophia. I'm also a senior here at Shriner and I'm also a public health major. Um, and this is our presentation on the application of geographical information system in a small rural community in Texas. So the purpose of the research was to implement the use of a geographical information systems uh, for the visualization of the data in a map. So the geographical information systems are an important visualization tool being a major key to public health. Um, by providing a map of resources, we can inform community members where local resources are located and acknowledge any lack of resources in Kerrville, Texas, allowing for the advocacy and implementation of the resources that meets community needs. Okay, and then some background information. So specifically for this, we're looking at the Doyle community and the Doyle community is in Kerrville, Texas. Um, historically, this is known as the area of Kerrville that was segregated based on race. Um, so majority being African-American. However, with the increase in population, segregation has ended, um, but the, Do the Doyle community still has elements of segregation. Um, so it's mostly low income, it's mostly Hispanic individuals. Uh, so basically by using the ArcGIS and Power BI, the, ge the two geographical information systems that we looked at, um, we wanted to determine the most appropriate program to use in epidemiology for the fall of 2020 um, for ease by use of the community to visualize community assets. Um, so this data was collected by previous nursing students from Trinity University. And then once the data was collected, the data sets were applied to two different GIS systems. So I used Power BI and then Marta used ArcGIS. So ArcGIS is a platform for organizations to create, manage, share, and analyze spatial data. It consists of server components, um, including mobile and desktop applications and developer tools. The most basic uh, GIS function is to create maps and drawing inferences, which helps uh, visualize and understand relationships, patterns, and trends such as illnesses and healthcare resources, which is what uh, we both focused on was um, using data collected by previous nursing students that shows like where different resources were located, like health resources were located in Kerrville. So based on research, public health agencies are using ArcGIS software to connect maps, apps, and data, and people across platforms and devices. And so I use Power BI, and so Power BI is kind of part of the Microsoft software system. So it's included with PowerPoint, Word, Excel, and things like that. Um, so to use Power BI, it was very easy to use. It was very accessible to um, community members, not just public health professionals. So that was a plus. Um, also with Power BI, you had to know the exact location. Um, so like latitude and longitude location of the areas that you were plotting so that you can see that as kind of like a plus or pro or a con. Um, since you did know the exact location, but you also had to know the exact location. So if you didn't know, that was kind of a con. Um, with Power BI, you were also able to click on the location that you mapped and you could see all the information associated with it. So you could see the fees implemented, you could see how the demographics that use that um, location. So it was very interesting to see that. A another thing that was really cool with Power BI, and I know Marta's also had this, was that there was a mobile app available. So I actually did download the app and I was able to look at my da data sets that I plotted on an app view. So that was really cool to look at. Um, and then also with Power BI, there's a the ability to add a reference layer. So you can compare demographics or you can compare um, different things based on the location that you're mapping on Power BI. So both qualitative and quantitative elements of resources were collected, um, such as access, acceptability, accessibility, distance from the Doyle Community Center, any fees associated with the healthcare resources, overall allowing us to determine each resource's likelihood of being utilized by community members. So here is a screenshot of my data uh, plotted. So as you see, here's the Doyle Community Center and you can see the different resources available. So we have Peterson Health over here and then we have the Kerrville State Hospital, um, Peter Peterson Community Health Center, um, HEB, just the different resources that they have access to. Using ArcGIS, I'm able to measure the from the Doyle Community Center to P Peterson Health, um, just the distance. I can also um, apply layers, meaning like there's some data already available for Kerrville on ArcGIS. Like for example, I know I was 
playing with the data of cardiovascular disease in Kerrville. So once I added that layer on top it, like of my data, it allowed me to see um, the percentage of individuals in the Kerrville community um, who had cardiovascular disease and compare it from like one side of Kerrville to the other. Okay, so then for my mapping of resources using Power BI, um, I included the phone view right here. So you can see at the top, it has like a little map of Kerrville and this is just a general map, but as you get closer and closer, you can click on uh, different resources that we mapped and stuff like that. But as you can see here also with just um, mapping Kerrville in general, looking at the whole Ker the city of Kerrville, you can see um, it says census track percentages of race in Kerrville, census track percentages of education levels in Kerrville, um, so that's really cool to look at because you can look at the demographics and see that um, you know certain demographics have certain resources here, certain demographics have lacking are lacking certain resources. So that was really cool. And then also with these kind of data um, sets at the bottom, you can also look at different locations and you can see um, the price that the average person pays. You can see the average uh, income level that the person makes who visits there. Uh, and stuff like that. So it's really cool to see kind of who is using the data, the resources that are located in the community um, and who is who is needing more of these resources in certain areas of Kerrville. So the results, um, using the two different geographical information systems, it allowed the creation of a visualization um, that portrayed the data collected in map format. So now residents, researchers, and local public health professionals will be able to access this map to locate the resources available to the Doyle community and the lack of resources available. So ultimately, the aim of this was to create a map that represents all comp components of the data collected of the resources available that is easy to read and understand. So since we both compared these two data systems, the next step for this program would be the selection of an appropriate geographical information system for the primary use in fall 2020. Um, so yeah, so we, we were kind of looking at the pros and cons of each of these, and now that we've kind of looked at it, now it's up to us to discuss which one we think would be more effective um, in you know, epidemiological research and in kind of mapping these um, resources for the Kerbal community. So again, a special thanks to our faculty sponsor, Dr. Grubasek, um, Mr. David Reese and the Work Study Program, as well as the Center for Printing and Digital Production. Thank you for making this project possible.